The jet-powered Me-262s fulfilled various attack roles in World War II. This included fighter bomber, night fighter, reconnaissance, and bomber interceptor. The intent of this video is to review the Me-262's armor placement locations, thickness, and estimate its bullet stopping power. By fall of 1943, Germany was losing the air war and it rested its hopes on a new generation of jet or rocket-powered fighters that were much faster than Allied fighters, as discussed on this page from a March 1945 Air Intelligence Weekly Summary document. To be successful, the new jet fighters will need to be more heavily armed, armored, and in sufficient numbers to counter the Allied bombers. Me-262 jets' armored plates are 50% thicker than the Me-109 fighter. These jets are the most heavily armored fighters that Germany has developed. This feature, plus fewer moving parts and fuel lines, makes successful attacks difficult. This page from a March 1945 Air Intelligence document outlines the Me-262's armor panel locations and thicknesses. The windscreen is bullet-resistant glass at 90 millimeters or 3.5 inches thick. This is 55% thicker than the Me-109's thickness of 2.25 inches as seen in this image. This page from a February 1945 Air Intelligence document outlines features and details of a captured Me-262, including its armored plate details. This jet incorporated more armor plating than any other inspected models. The Me-262's armored windscreen is 16 inches high, tapering from 12.5 inches at the base to 9 inches at the top. Its weight equates to 70 pounds. The thickness of all armored plates equates to 15 millimeters or 0.6 inches. That's roughly the thickness of the B-17's ball turret's armored seat, which is the thickest armor on the bomber. Head-on bullet strikes will need to pass through the jet's nose section, which incorporates four MK-108 30 millimeter auto cannons, ammo boxes, and chutes, the 238 gallon forward self-sealing fuel tank, and the 15 millimeter thick armored front plate. This image shows the MK-108 30 millimeter auto cannon, the Me-262's nose area occupied, the nose section systems and armaments. It might seem dangerous to surround the pilot with the plane's fuel, but as long as the fuel tank self-sealing features are not compromised, passage of a 50 caliber round through the fuel tank will slow or stop the bullet, reducing its armor penetrating power. A sketch of the front armor plate is shown here. This is the first Allied encounter of a 262 incorporating forward armor plate. It is mounted below the ballistic windscreen. It is 7.5 inches high and 19.75 inches wide. Another 15 millimeter armor plate was located in front of the rudder pedals. The armor plate is T-shaped as seen in this sketch. The plate is 33 inches wide and 24.5 inches tall. It appears provisions for additional armor to fill these cavities were included, but no armor fill panels were in the crash plane. From rear attacks, bullets will need to pass through the aft fuselage, a 159-gallon aft auxiliary fuel tank, a 238-gallon aft main fuel tank, and then through the pilot's 15-millimeter rear armor. The rear armor's plate shape is shown in this sketch. The panel is 2 feet 10 inches wide and 1 foot 7 inches high. A view of the 262's rear fuselage structure and cavity systems. It is estimated the weight of the Me-262's armor windscreen and panels is 270 pounds. If the missing rudder panels are included, the armor weight increases to 320 pounds. A bullet's penetrating power is dependent on its kinetic energy, as discussed in this 1945 Fighter Gunnery Manual. Its kinetic energy is strongly dependent on its strike speed. The muzzle velocity of a 50 caliber bullet is roughly 2,700 feet per second, as defined in this 1945 Fighter Gun Harmonization document. Air resistance will slow down a bullet as shown in this 1944 technical manual. This chart outlines the 50 caliber bullet speed as a function of its strike distance from the machine gun's muzzle. At a 400 yard maximum effective range, a 50 caliber bullet will have slowed down to a strike speed of 2,268 feet per second. This chart represents the armor penetration capability of a 50 caliber armor piercing round from a 1945 terminal ballistics document. A 50 caliber's bullet speed will need to be 1,900 feet per second or faster to penetrate a 0.6 inch thick homogeneous steel armor plate if struck at a zero degree obliquity angle. If the bullet speed is reduced from the gun's muzzle velocity of 2,700 feet per second to 1,900 feet per second or less by its air travel, structural penetration, systems penetration, and fuel tank penetration, then the 15 millimeter armor will be of sufficient gauge to stop the projectile.
In the future, the channel will address case study engagements between Allied fighters and ME-262 jets to address tactics adopted to destroy the jets. If you found this ME-262 armor deep dive review informative, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.